Hey everyone, welcome back to your Python programming series. It has been a while since I've made a video, I think like 48 days or something. I mean hours, but anyways, it's bright and early. I'm about to crank some videos out and we're, we're gonna get through some quality content here. But first, we need to do some review before we move on to the next subject. So if you've been following along, this is just a review of what we've covered, as well as some extra notes in, in here up on my GitHub account. Here is the path. You can follow any of these links to get a little bit extra information or just read some of my comments. But pretty much the whole purpose here is to do the CRUD operations of a database. We wanna be able to create data. We wanna be able to read data, update data, and delete data. And eventually, once we got that uh, those operations done, we want to abstract that away just a bit by creating an SDK, which is just a bunch of functions that we can use to work with the database. So to begin, we create a, a database with this line of code right here. And this is how we get a reference to the connection which we can use throughout our code. Whenever we wanna do an in-memory database, we put colon at the beginning and at the end with memory. So colon, memory, colon. When we do that, every single time we launch this application, we're starting with a fresh database. No tables, nothing. So then I talk a little bit here about paths, which I, I briefly mentioned, but if you wanna know how to get a more more of an ab absolute path or a concrete path then you can follow this technique here the next thing to work with the database you use this thing called a cursor and to get that you say con whatever you named your connection dot cursor and we assign that to a variable and we're going to use that throughout so anytime you want to execute s some sql you just say c dot execute and this is the syntax to create a table with two columns title pages first one's of type text and next one is of type integer. These are built-in types to SQLite. Next up, we insert some data. So we say insert into books values, and then this is the first one, which is the title, and then this is the second value, which goes to pages. So the first one's quoted, the next one is just a number, so no quotes. Then when we want to save our changes, we say connection.commit. So that is how to insert data that would be the create portion of CRUD, which is the acronym I just taught you. Next up, we want to retrieve data, which would be the read portion. I show two different ways of doing that here. So the very first one is to select one element, and in this situation, we use a tuple here with a comma after the first element. So that's just a little bit of funky syntax, but that is what you need to do. And we always want to use a question mark here. We don't want to do any string concatenation like putting plus and then whatever a variable might be. Right now it's not super important because we're actually just hard coding the value. So there's no risk of any kind of SQL injection. But once we get to the SDK where we're taking values from the user, then that situation we're at risk for people trying to hack into our databases, steal our datas. We don't want people to do that. So what you can do then is say fetch one and that is going to get one element Back. The alternative we show here is fetch all. There's also, I believe, fetch many, which we haven't shown here, but I'm sure you can figure out that if you want. So the next thing we do is we show how to insert numerous pieces of data so we can select all of them. So we create the books here, and we're just having a list of tuples, execute many, and then for values, we put two question marks, which refers to the columns, and then outside of the quotes, we put the, the books list. So that is how you would do that. Then to get all the data, you say select everything from books. We're not doing a where clause here, so we're just gonna grab everything, and we say fetch all, and we print that data. So that is how you would retrieve data as well as insert numerous elements at once. Next up, we talk about delete. So we can first select the data just to be sure we're deleting what we think we're deleting. And then all you really have to do is change select to delete. So instead of selecting from books, we are deleting from books. We don't need the columns either. So get rid of this portion when you want to delete and replace it with the keyword delete. Then you can select that same data afterwards and confirm that it no longer exists. Next up, we have updating data. This one is pretty simple. So we selected the data just to see what, what we got there. 
And then we change the pages to 30, where title is Goodnight Moon. It looks like I use a string here, but I think you could use a number. Yeah. Select everything from books where title is Goodnight Moon after. So we check to make sure that the data is updated. And then we close the connection. I think it would be more appropriate to put this line after the update, so up on line 68. Now, if we wanted to create an SDK of this, this is how we would consume it. So we're consuming it from this file here, and we just say import books SDK, as well as a book object, because we're basically working with objects that represent books. So you can see that if you, if you need. So here's some examples, but pretty much we can just call functions that make sense. Books SDK dot add book, pass a book object in, get book by title. Um, we have get books, which just gets all of the books, update book, delete book. And you can be totally custom here. You could create one update book by title, update book by ID, get book by ID, delete all books. You can create any function you want. So any database operation you might need in your code, you can create an, an SDK function to do that for you and then just invoke that function. But anywho, if you wanna see that, that file, we can go back and check out. First, let's take a look at the book class, which I've shown you guys like at least a thousand times in this series, but pretty much we have two fields, title and pages, and then a bunch of override it, overrode overrided it functions and then we're going to go in the books SDK and show how to do this so what I decided to do was create this function that will give us a cursor so it pretty much just gets the connection and then gets the cursor object on it I do some weird path stuff here but that's just to always create the database in the current directory that this file is in so that's just a different way of doing that Alternatively, just change directories to this folder when you're working in the terminal and it should work just fine. So this is going to create the cursor and then at the end of each of these functions, we decided to close the connection. So it's gonna open, close, open, close every time you need to do something. And that's what this link is referring to, why I decided that that was an okay way of doing it. Um, alternatively, you could maintain a connection, but my thoughts are, you might not be doing database operations every second or whatever. So why not just open it when you need it, close it when you're done, and then if you need it later, repeat the process. So the whole opening and closing stuff, it's all done for us in this code whenever we invoke one of these functions. And when you have a cursor, you can actually get access to the connection object because right, pretty much you, you use the connection object to get the cursor, but you can actually go back and use that cursor to get that connection with the, with a dot connection here, and then you can say dot close. And a lot of these operations will have like a last row ID, which will give you the ID of the thing you changed, or later on there's an example of row count, which will say how many things were deleted. So that's another example of that. So here's how we add a book. We take in a book as a parameter, which has a book.title and book.pages. That's where these question marks come in just to avoid any SQL injections. We use with C dot connection, which is going to roll back if there is any exceptions. You don't have to do the commit after the SQL, although it doesn't close the connection, so we do that after. Here's how to get a book by title. You pass a title in. In this situation, since we're, the function expects a title, you don't have to pass in an entire object you might not have that object available to you in the code and you want to get that as an object. So what you do is you just type in what the title might be and this thing is actually going to get that object for you. So it's going to get one from the database. It's going to then build a book object passing in that, that item's title and page count. Then you have a book object you can work with, you can modify the data and then save it or whatever you need to do. So you might pass that, that book, if you were modifying it, you might pass it to this new update book function here, which takes a book object as well as a new title and new pages. So 
that's an example of what you could do with that object. You do gotta be careful though, just because, for example, if you're changing an object you get using get book by title, and you say book.title and set it to something else, and then you try to pass it to this function we created, well, it's just going to search by that object's title and pages. So if you change those in code, it's probably not gonna find those in the database, so you'd probably want to do the update of the data using this function instead of directly on the object. So hopefully that makes sense, but you could customize this however you guys need. Next up we have a delete book, which you can see there. It's not really that exciting, but it's pretty exciting. So this is a lot of stuff, and pretty much the best way to learn this is just to go through and build a sample of this yourself, because like that's how I learned all this stuff. I was like, oh, here's what I wanna do. Let's try to figure out the code on how to do that. So in my mind, I was like, okay, I want an update book that takes a book object, and then the new data you want to replace with. And I was like, oh, I want to delete a book by book object. But you could equally create a function delete book by title, and in that situation, you would change this book object here to a, t a string title that you could then search for or using the where title. That way you wouldn't need the book.title and the book.pages, you would just need the title. Whatever you need. So fully customize the SDK to work with your application. And if you're in a really good team environment, you know, you might have someone who's building the logic of your program and then you might be building just that interface layer to the database so they say hey we need a, an sdk function to get a book by a title and then you implement that test it and then hand it off to them that's just a, a setup that might work for you guys if you're in a, in a team setting and that's all i got for this review we're going to be talking about building graphical user interfaces now briefly because we're running out of videos in this series but it's something i definitely want to get into so i'm pretty excited and that'll be a pretty cool introduction so stay tuned and then after that we're going to be getting into some web development so we got a lot of cool stuff in the next few videos